Okay, for part three, what I thought I'd do is uh, share with you one story from the book. Let me show it to you here. Here's the book. Solder Smoke, A Global Adventure in Radio Electronics. Um, <laughs> I'll share with you one story that's UK related that I think you'll, you'll enjoy, and I think it'll give you a sense of what, what the book is, is all about. It's from uh, chapter six of the book called uh, Urban Radio. Solder Smoke in Central London. Um, I begin. I'd finally gotten my homebrew 40 meter double sideband transmitter working and I was anxious to try it out. This was the first rig that I'd built in the UK. As I prepared to make my first calls, I tried to think of an appropriate name for the transmitter. The Anglo-American? Maybe the Yank? Perhaps the Churchill? Unfortunately, on the day of that first on-the-air test, conditions were poor. My central London location imposed severe handicaps in the antenna area, and I was putting out only a few watts of DSB. So I knew I wouldn't be threatening the health of anyone's receiver. But as the Brits say, I thought I'd give it a go. After much searching for a clear frequency, and you have to be doubly careful with double sideband, and much futile CQing, with my newly minted UK call sign, M0HBR, ambitiously homebrew radio, I finally made contact. It was a British station. I was delighted because it was precisely for UK contacts that I'd built this rig. As a teenage ham in New York, contacts with the UK were among my favorites. Crossing the pond was always great, but for some reason there was something special about a contact with the G station was on the other end. Much later in the Azores, I was almost exactly one ionospheric F layer, one hop from the UK, and it seemed that at least a third of my contacts were with UK radio amateurs. When I moved to London and inside the UK skip zone, contact with the UK became impossible on 17 and 20 meters, and I quickly came to miss my conversations with our congenial British cousins. So. With local contacts in mind, I built a 40-meter rig. I was hoping that I was hoping for near vertical incidence skywave NVIS contacts. My radio waves would still be bouncing off the ionosphere, but they would go be going pretty much straight up and then straight back down. On this first day of tests, the other station wasn't hearing me very well, and the band was starting to fade. But I couldn't resist asking him for an audio report. Well, old man, he said, I think you've got some problem, some sort of problem in the audio amplifier. There seems to be some distortion. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's somehow making you sound, I don't know, how can I put it, it's somehow making you sound like an American. <laughs> With a chuckle, I politely explained that the distortion he's, he was hearing had been injected into the system some 45 years earlier in New York City, and that tweaking the audio amplifiers was not going to help at all. Anyway, uh, that, that's, I hope that gives you a flavor of uh, what the book is like. I've had, I've had a lot of fun writing the book. It's just uh, kind of, um, it, well, it's, 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 it's a radio memoir, but it's a technical memoir, too, because there are lots of stories like that. But I also have in the book, uh, technical portions in which I describe um, the struggles with radio theory that I've had over the years and uh, the ways that I have come to understand some of the more difficult parts of, of radio electronic theory. And this brings us to um, the NAC. We need to talk about the NAC, gentlemen. Uh, the NAC, the term the NAC originates from the, the cartoon uh, Dilbert. I'm sure many of you have seen Dilbert and uh, there's one video cartoon in which they, Scott Adams, the, um, the, the creator and author of, of the Dilbert cartoon, uh, presents young Dilbert, Dilbert as, I guess, 12 or 13 year old. His mother takes him to the doctor and says that for some reason he is obsessed with taking things apart, putting them together. And the doctor says, well, that's normal for, for, for boys. And she said, yes, doctor, but 
But when he takes things apart, he often tries to use the parts to build a ham radio set, at which point the doctor grows very concerned and informs uh, Mrs. Dilbert that, uh, or Mama Dilbert, that her son has the knack. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I think uh, many of us have the knack. Uh, I trace uh, my connection with the malady to, to Gene Shepard, who I mentioned earlier. Shepard, when he, when he spoke about ham radio, he talked about the technical aspects of the hobby, and he presented radio amateurs as, well, he presented folks who were true radio amateurs as people who were technically oriented and who were at least striving to be true radio wizards. And um, he was talking about the desire, or, or I guess the ambition, to really understand the radio theory, to, to move away from, from black box uh, commercial appliance radio, and to the extent possible, and all of us do this to a greater or lesser extent, to, to get involved in the, uh, in, the, in the magic, the mystery, and the beauty of the physics behind uh, the, the radio devices that we use to communicate. Um, and I think all of us can be involved in this in different ways. If sometimes it's, it's just a matter of pulling out the handbook and, and reading about and learning about the circuitry and the radios we use. At the other end of the spectrum, um, there are among us those who can pull out a sheet of paper and design their own circuits and then put these circuits uh, uh, and construct these circuits and put them, put them on the air. And, and I guess all of us are somewhere in the spectrum uh, between the two extremes. But uh, uh, the knack, Dilbert, and radio wizardry is an important part uh, of, w of what we do. The other thing, and I'd like to close with this, this is, I think, the other really important part of, of Solder Smoke, of the, of the podcast and the book, um, is what I call the IBEW. Now, in the States, the IBEW is instantly recognized as an important uh, labor union. It's the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. And we've modified the title a little bit, and we now call it the International Brotherhood, in our case, the International Brotherhood of electronic wizards. And uh, this is sort of a joking reference to the fact that one of the things that we've discovered, and I guess this has long been known, but the internet has made it more apparent, is that all over the world there are people who have stories just like ours. People who got involved in ham radio as, as teenagers and, and have stuck with it ever since. It, it's, it's very heartening, I think, to find someone in a, in, a, in a country and in a culture very, very far removed from our own and discover that this person has the same experiences that we have. And I, I through Solder Smoke, have found this to be true. You find, you know, many, many radio amateurs in, in far off India, in Sudan, all through, all through Africa and Asia. And the amazing thing is that their story is the same. They, they, they've, they've had the same experiences. They have the same interests. They have the same knack instincts. This is something that can really pull us together. I think we now have a chance through the Internet uh, to, to solidify this, this bond that can pull us together with people from other countries. Uh, we can extend the tradition of Elmerism, the, the, I guess the, the prime directive of radio amateur life, which is help your fellow radio amateur. We could extend that globally now, and, and it is happening, uh, I think, mo largely facilitated by the Internet. So in closing, I'd, I'd just like to thank you guys for giving me the chance to, to talk to you. Enjoy the rally, and I'd encourage all of you to, to do whatever you can to foster this kind of international spirit to help your fellow radio amateurs, especially if the guy at the other end is, is in some far-off country and and struggling with parts availability or looking for advice or working across a, a language barrier. We're all in this together. We are the International Brotherhood of Electronic Wizards. We're united by our interest in radio and the knack. Hey, thanks very much. 7-3 from Rome. Enjoy the convention.